everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for turning to my channel once again. Yesterday in the last night, we talked about some developmental concern in relating to certain people may committing certain type of crime. And today we gonna dive in and talking more, more, more about how the mental illness impact on the crime. So we haven't talked about mental illness for a while, but this is very important to kind of input and insert those type of concept with the crime so you guys will have a better understanding of how those crimes develop, okay? has something to do with crime. So does that contribute to the crime? Obviously. Uh, substance abuse? Yes. So if you try to put all those together, that does make sense. So when we talk about strong connection, is a crime based on the mental illness or because people have mental illness, they develop and lean to them to have criminology, crime, crime behavior? We have no idea. Surprisingly, it's not be documented uh, clearly in regarding to this matter. So um, I cannot answer. I'm not a professional in this field. So I cannot tell you is mental illness and crime are relating to each other. Okay. But this is a very mysterious subject. If you guys want to know more about this, um, definitely search for uh, criminology with mental illness. So a lot of criminal conduct, conduct okay, has to do with neurological damage. When I say neurological damage, I mean that certain part of their brain is not registered. It's just, it doesn't link together. Um, the signal, the circulator doesn't really come up together. So there's a reason why they commanding crime in general. So I think they done a, a, a research before um, about is 14 people participate in this research. Okay, that's what they say. 14 people, and the research is basically trying to talk about how mental illness are uh, impacting on the crime, and how crime impacting the mental illness. So, so does that really like have a strong connection, or um, how do they like determine? There's an outcome, is there an outcome? Is there is a possibility that uh, the crime or the mental illness or neurological damage does not really correlate with each other. But what they find is nine out of 14 people who was doing these experiments are suffering from a serious neurological abnormality, which means that they does have they do have problems. A problem is out there and then they definitely have problems that hasn't been addressed and 40 out of 40 people on this experiment are suffer from serious trauma to their head 8 out of 40 people require hospitalization has hospitalization and 7 out of 40 people are psych psychotic 4 out of 14 people have mood disorder 3 out of 14 people have paranoia symptoms 12 people out of 40 people was brutally abused when they were younger and then five out of 12 people are, are kind of strange. That's just put that, that they have some uh, very risky tendency. And nine out of 14 kids was actually um, witnessed murder when they were young. And five out of 14, 40 out of this have tendency of torture animals. So, so you can see that um, in this study, they they utilize all those people who have some problem and they doing a research on those 14 participants and they, they come up with some kind of uh, problem then they do a lot of research but i'm not gonna go in uh, detail about that so everybody in here has neurological damage but they don't they always have a different type of issue okay so of course 
If frontal lobe is damaged, does that cause people to be impulsive? Yes, definitely. I think on one of my earliest YouTube, very early, I was talking about a construction worker who damaged his frontal lobe. And what happened was he was he was recovering, but his behavior has been changed. So that's definitely uh, associated with you know with people who have a frontal lobe um, damage. There's a possibility that they they will have problems. So a lot of people commenting violent sex crime. The temporal lobe is damaged. That's according to research. Uh, emotional disturbance has to link with frontal lobe damage. So when the frontal lobe are damaged, the criminal will act more impulsive and they will have more rage. Okay, so that's pretty much is a research they're talking about. They also mentioned about um, hippocampus. Um, that was kind of registration to your memory and the people uh, have suffered certain problem with hippocampus, they cannot remember things well. Okay, so those are kind of uh, problem. But does that link to their brain disease? Not really sure. But does that link to the biochemical or neurotransmitter sub substance if they're using certain type of thing? Does that damage their neural structure? Definitely yes. So that's why we talk about prolonging use of drug will damage their uh, frontal lobe, will damage their um, you know the cortex, brain frontal cortex. Everything else will be damaged when you prolong the use all those type of drugs. And it's gonna be uh, manifested when, when you use longer. And all those symptoms and the behavior will start to uh, show up. So let's say the prefrontal cortex, if it's damaged by a stroke, the behavior will not change, okay? That much, because it's getting older, you get a stroke. However, they may start abandoning friends, family, or withdraw from their job, okay? Uh, it's nothing to do with their IQ. They still have high IQ. It's just because a certain brain was damaged and caused them to uh, reduce uh, the dopamine transmitting to the brain. And then they may show less interest in forming a relationship with other person. So is this clear abnormality directly affect a person's violent behavior? Not necessary. Is that a prediction of a criminal behavior? No. All those are unknown, like I said before, is under the part of research they have never been really um, find out exactly what will happen to those people who actually um, become abnormal reality because of the brain um, suffering from the brain problem or because that can link to their um, violent behavior. Who knows, right? So overall of the best predictor of the feature behavior is past behavior. So let me emphasize again, the best predictor of feature behavior is a person's past behavior. But even past behavior will not necessarily to be repeated. The best predictor of criminal behavior is a history of a criminal behavior. And the past violence will suggest a probability of a feature violence. So a history of a criminal behavior is the best predictor of a criminal um, problem regardless of whatever the offender is mentally disordered or they're acting normal. But again, people can change, you know. Uh, when they get older, furthermore, the frequently the behavior has occurred in a variety of situations, the more accurate the prediction will be. So someone who frequently manifests violence across many different situations, will be far easier to predict than a person who's only occasionally violent in a sound situation. So it still goes to the psychological research data. So the key point is how to predict, right? If the person have a frequently manifesting any type of violence in across different kind of situation, it will be easy for researcher to predict their future violent behavior. So everything is a risk factor and all you have to know is a lot of things has done with the research, but we never can be guaranteed about the outcome of everything. That's it for today's YouTube. If you have any question, feel free to leave any comment under my YouTube channel and I will see you at the next video.